This lesson addresses learning outcome two, reading and viewing, and the assessment standard which requires learners to explore the key features of text and explain how they contribute to meaning, describe development of plot, subplot, conflict, character, and role of narrator. Describe how background and settings relate to character and or theme. Hey. Shh. Oh, so all of a sudden you don't want to chat and you just want to read your book? Yeah, you are right about this whole reading thing. All you have to do is get started and I can't wait to get to the other chapters. And? Are you learning anything as you go? Well, I haven't been to Botswana and all, but it's as if I know the place and it's as if the characters are my friends. Hi, it seems as if our learners are starting to see the value of reading, that it can take you places and allow you to experience things. In fact, they are discovering something about novels that Ernest Hemingway, the winner of a Nobel Prize for Literature, once wrote. All good books are alike, in that they are truer than if they had really happened. And after you've finished reading one, you will feel that all that happened to you. And afterwards, it all belongs to you. The good and the bad, the ecstasy and the remorse. To find out a bit more about how books make you feel as if you've been to places and have met people, you need to think about their setting and characters. So these are the two aspects of the novels that we are going to focus on in these lessons. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe how characters are created, explain how setting relates to the story, in our previous lesson, we learned a bit about the context of our novel, the background to the story. So we already know that Because Bula Means Rain is set in the present day in Botswana, which is where the author Jenny Robson lives. But Botswana is a big country with many different types of places in it, from small villages to big cities like Khaborone. So there are many possible settings for the story in the novel to unfold. In this lesson, we're going to go into a lot more detail about setting. Here is a definition of setting. Setting is the place where the action unfolds, where the story takes place. The setting is often described in the opening of a novel, and this is true for the novel Because Bula Means Rain that we are focusing on in these lessons. Here is how the story begins. As we listen to it, think about what clues it gives us about the setting of the novel. I always like the August wind. It blows across the village from the smart houses of Kedia Heights down the single tar road where it flings litter up into the air, then on along the dry riverbed towards the hearts of Ward 12, past Mutsumi Bar where Maseko's father drinks too much now. And it sighs around the curve of Symmetry Hill, skimming the dusty sands between the goats and the thorn trees towards Koti Corner. In this novel, most of the action takes place in a village in Botswana and the extract that we have just read helps us to paint a picture in our minds. What clues about setting are given in the opening of the novel? From this extract, we know that there are rich and poor people in Botswana as there are smart houses and huts. We also know that parts of Botswana are very rural as goats and thorn trees can be seen from the single tar road. We also get the impression that Botswana is a dry country as we are told about the wind, the dry riverbed and the dusty sand. The setting is important because it helps us learn more about the characters and can even relate to the themes of the novel. For example, from this opening extract, we wonder who Masejo is and what it is that has caused her father to drink so much. But let's not jump too far ahead. We'll get to Masejo and her father in a couple of lessons. Now that we know more about setting, let's consider what characters are and how they are created in novels. When we talk about a character, we mean a created person in a work of fiction. When reading a novel, we are pulled into the lives of the characters. But how do we begin to understand the characters that we meet in a novel? One way of doing this is to see how the characters in the novel describe themselves. This is how the main character in Because Bula Means Rain, Emmanuel, describes himself. I hate mirrors. I hate to see my reflection. It is always a shock to me. 
It is as if each time I'm seeing my face for the very first time. But there are mirrors everywhere. I cannot escape them. There are mirrors and windows that show me my awkward teeth pushing out too hard and too far against my lips. And my eyes that are always screwed up, even behind the tinted glasses that Miss Tena bought me. And my ginger yellow hair that shows under the edges of the floppy head I must always wear. And my pink pink skin. Most of all, my pink pink skin. From this extract, we have learned that Emmanuel doesn't seem to like what he sees in mirrors and windows. He seems quite unhappy about the way he looks. From this description, we now have an image of Emmanuel in our minds. A description, perhaps. But we need to read further so that we can begin to discover more about Emmanuel as a character. We've already seen how Emmanuel describes himself. But another way we can find out about a character is to read descriptions of a character's thoughts. In this novel, Emmanuel is the narrator, and so we have many opportunities to do this. Here's an example. I am one in 10,000. That's what it said in Miss Tana's encyclopedia that she kept on the bottom shelf of her bookstore. Albino, absence of pigment, lack of melanin, only one in 10,000. Such an ugly sounding word, albino. I hear it whispered around me, or else the Setswana word, leswafi. I hear it hissed in the aisle of the spa shop and among from one peoples at the community junior secondary school, the CJSS. Leswafi, Leswafi, as if I'm an alien or a refugee, not a Motswana at all. Through reading Emmanuel's thoughts, we discover that Emmanuel lives a difficult life in his village because he is an albino, a Leswafi, and is not accepted by his peers. He longs for people to see him from the inside out rather than judging him from the outside in. Although we might not know what it is like to be an albino, we all have experiences of being excluded. This means that we are able to relate to how Emmanuel feels. Let's see what the author Jenny Robson has to say about the character Emmanuel. What was your inspiration for Because Bula Means Rain? Um, first of all, I'm immensely interested in people's race, in, in people's skin colour. I think that's such an important part of who you are, of your identity, of your culture. And of course it's the one thing in, in, about you that you can never change. And so it was my interest in that. Um, and especially, you know, I grew up in Cape Town when a, a South Africa was an apartheid country. And I often used to think how people with dark skins would wish they were white because of course if you were white you had all the perks, you had all the privileges, your life was just made. And then I thought how interesting it would be to turn that back to front, to have somebody with a white skin who was longing to be brown. So that was the first thing. And then I'm also very interested in rejection, in how some people feel they are outcasts, that they don't fit in with the rest of their society. What made you decide to write a book about an albino boy? There was, there was one defining moment when it like flashed into my mind that I wanted to write about a young boy who was an albino. What, what happened, I was driving along the road and I saw this young man from behind and I was so impressed with the way he held himself because his shoulders were back and his head was high and he looked so self-confident and I thought that's it's really great to see a young guy who looks like that. And then as I drove past and saw him in the rearview mirror, I realised that he had albinism, that, that he was an albino. And I already knew from way back um, that, that in Botswana and in other countries, a person who's an albino has a very hard struggle that there are stories told about them, that pregnant women will cross the road rather than walking close to them, and, and that they are stigmatized very badly. And, and then the thought that this young man, after facing challenges like that, could still walk with his head high and his shoulders back and show such, such self-esteem, it really struck me. And I knew I wanted to write about a young boy who was an albino and find a way for him to cope and to walk with his head high too. So far we have learned that we can develop an understanding of characters by considering their physical descriptions and by reading a description of their thoughts. We can also learn about character through a description of their behavior or actions. 
Listen to this description. It tells us the differences between how Emmanuel's mother and grandmother behave towards Emmanuel. The stories were too hard for my mother to bear, and so she left me with my grandmother. The stories didn't trouble my grandmother. She says such stories are the devil's work. My mother went to the mine and found a cleaning job instead. Sometimes she comes home to visit me, but when she comes, she will not look at my face. If we are all inside, she stares down at the Lord's Prayer plague on the table while she asks, How is it at school? Are your marks good? Are you behaving for your grandmother? Or if we are outside, she stares down at the fire circle with its dead black scotch marks, and she leaves quickly. I must go now. My friend Malewuho is expecting me. This extract helps us to imagine what it must be like for Emmanuel to feel rejected by his mother. And from it, we also learn about the characters of the grandmother and Emmanuel's mother. This is what our learners had to say about these characters. Shay, man, things must have been really tough for Emmanuel. I mean, imagine your mom not wanting to hang around with you. After I read that, I really didn't like her. Emmanuel's mother never had it easy, you know. I mean, imagine having the whole village gossiping about you and your child. Well, the, the grandmother didn't listen to it much, did she? This is exactly the kind of thinking and discussing that you need to do every time you read something about a character, as this will help you to get into the character's head and understand their personalities and emotions. We've looked at a number of ways that the author can give us information about a character. Even more clues can be given by describing the character's relationship with the setting. In Because Bula Means Rain, we learn that Emmanuel is desperate to go to Khaboroni. Read the following extract and see if you can work out why Khaboroni is so important to Emmanuel. I couldn't speak. I stood staring up at the sunglasses, wanting to go so badly that there was a huge ache in my throat. Khaboroni, our capital city, full of thousands and thousands of people who would be too busy to take any notice of me. Sometimes I dreamt about being in Khaboroni and how everything would be right for me there. Why do you think being in Khaboroni is so important for Emmanuel? From this description of Khaboroni and Emmanuel's reaction to it, we wonder if it finds it so appealing because there are so many people and he can just disappear or blend among the others. Khaboroni would be very different to the very small village in which Emmanuel grew up where he was always being stared at and gossiped about. Now let's listen how Jenny Robson describes Emmanuel and what he sees in Khaboroni. So many strange looking people in front of all the tall buildings. Khaboroni was everything I wanted it to be. A man leaned against the street lamp and his hair orange yellow, more orange yellow than mine, there in the sunlight. Two Botswana girls ran across the road in front of us with long hair that swung down their backs. Some white girls climbed out of a car with skirts so short that my grandmother would have fainted from the shame and the shock. From this, we can tell just how desperate Emmanuel is to fit in and how in Khaborone the people are so diverse and different that he feels as if he is no longer so noticeable. So, you can see, sometimes the author will give you lots of information about a character in one go, and sometimes they will feed you little tidbits of information a bit at a time. And so you can only build a full character profile by reading the whole novel. There is one final way that we can learn more about a character. This is by examining how characters react to each other and what they say. Take, for example, this instance. It clearly shows how the author has used the reaction of another character to teach us something about Emmanuel. Emmanuel is feeling really good about life and he goes into a bookstore in Khaborone. He loves books and remembers reading a particular book with an old friend. A little boy sat on the bookstore carpet with crossed legs, wedged in a dim corner between shelves. A little white boy. I recognized the book he was paging through. It was a book about strange monsters on a desert island. Except in the pictures, the monsters looked funny, not frightening. And I was feeling good. I crouched down beside the little boy and smiled. Are you enjoying your book? I asked. No one can ever be scared of monsters like that, can they? The little boy looked up at me. I should have known what would come next. Just by the expression in his eyes, I should have known what would happen. 
but I was feeling so at peace there in Gauroni that Saturday. Cool and comfortable. Like this was the place where everything was right for me. Like the circle of the emptiness was about to disappear forever. The little white boy looked up from his monster book and I saw his eyes go wide. And then he screamed. In the quiet bookstore, his scream was like the sound of a traffic accident. The sound of trucks scraping metal against metal at some great speed. Mom! Mommy! It's the boogeyman! He's trying to get me! The boogeyman! Mommy! What does this extract tell us about Emmanuel? This is what our learners had to say. Every time something like that happens to Emmanuel, my heart goes out to him. I mean, you can tell he's a nice person and all, but nobody gives him the time of day. Yeah, and the more I get to read about him, the more I get to know him. You know what I mean? So, you can see how a writer can slowly develop a character. From this extract, we realize that whilst Emmanuel is friendly and wants to chat, others regard him as a freak or monster. We wonder what it must be like to be treated like this by other people. But that is really enough for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll meet some other characters in the novel and take a look at some other settings. But right now, it's time for a task. Examine the following sentence, then explain how the author has used a description of the setting in the sentence to tell us more about how Emmanuel is feeling. I didn't want to stay on in Khaburoni either, with its tall, tight buildings that still echoed the screams of the little white boy. Please join us for the next lesson when we will continue to explore setting and character and the roles that these play in helping us to understand novels. See you next time.